On October 22, 1983, Charlie Harris suffered a nervous breakdown after a year of misfortunes. When he found out that President Ronald Reagan would be playing golf at the Augusta National Golf Club, he decided to go and talk to him. But he couldn't just walk in and ask for a private audience. So Harris crashed his Dodge pickup truck through the gates of the club and took five people hostage. This photo shows Secret Service agents responding to the incident. The men carried high-caliber weapons as they hurried to the spot where Harris held the hostages. President Reagan practically had a small army surrounding him at the golf course, and the Secret Service said he was never in real danger. However, Harris still managed to force his way into the club. In the end, he got the call from the president he asked for. Forty-five-year-old Charlie Harris faced several tragedies in 1983. His sick father had died at the beginning of the year, and his marriage was falling apart. At the same time, he lost his job at a local paper mill where he had worked for 23 years. Harris resorted to drinking to cope with his troubles. On the morning of the incident, October 22, 1983, he drove past the Augusta National Golf Club in Georgia. Several peace officers were guarding the place, which meant someone important was inside. A county deputy who was Harris's acquaintance told him that President Ronald Reagan was there playing golf. Harris then went home. As he began pouring himself a drink, he heard the news of a massive layoff at U.S. Steel caused by a loss of business due to foreign-made steel. This was the last straw for the man. In his drunken state, it suddenly seemed easy to drive back to the golf club and find President Reagan to give him a piece of his mind. After all, he had voted for him and was a big fan of his movies. Harris was familiar with the club. He'd worked there during high school and scavenged balls in its small lake. The man figured his 74 Dodge would be big enough to burst through the club's gates, protected by Secret Service agents, state troopers, helicopters, and limousines. He also hid his 38 caliber pistol under his belt, just in case. Tequila bottle in hand, Harris sped through Washington Road and crashed his blue truck against Gate 3 of the Augusta Golf Club. In an interview with Golf Digest, he said that action alone had caused him great worry, stating, quote, They might have had rocket launchers to blow me back to Washington Road. Gun in hand, he descended the vehicle and put the pistol to the head of a chauffeur, Roy Sullivan. Harris forced him into the golf shop, where he held four other club employees and two White House staffers hostage. According to Chris Hardy, a golf shop clerk, the man said, quote, I've lost my job, and I've lost my family, and my daddy's gone, and I want to talk to the president. President Reagan and the Secret Service agents were playing at the 16th hole of the golf course. This picture shows the exact moment that the agents reacted to the news of the break-in. Back then, the Secret Service carried Israeli-made Uzis. The president had survived a previous assassination attempt in 1981, so he resisted his agents' desire to whisk him off the property. Instead, he wanted to deal with the hostage situation himself. Reagan used an early model mobile phone to call the kidnapper at the pro shop where the hostages were being held. He reportedly started, quote, this is the President of the United States. This is Ronald Reagan. I understand you want to talk to me. Harris, however, thought he was being tricked and that the Secret Service was just playing a tape at the President. The kidnapper hung up and demanded that Reagan show up in person at the shop. But by then, the President had been convinced to be taken away in a motorcade led by Secret Service agents pointing their machine guns through an open car. When Harris saw the motorcade pass by, he knew his chance was gone. He let the hostages go. From the interview with Golf Digest, Harris said he never intended to shoot the president, stating, quote, If I'd wanted to kill him, I'd have driven up to him and done it. I just wanted to talk to him. I was protesting our government giving our jobs to foreign people. The man spent five years in state prison, charged with false imprisonment. After his release, the Secret Service monitored him for four years. President Reagan, meanwhile, went back to the golf club the day after the incident to finish his game. Today, the gates of the club are protected with bollards. While in prison, Harris studied the Bible and eventually became a minister. He died in 2007 and was survived by his wife, Eleanor. Eleanor.